again, the outcome, a successful outcome is defined by a greater than 50% reduction in pain, reduction in medications, improved function, improved quality of life. And the outcomes generally are pretty good for limb pain. So if someone's had previous spinal surgery, they've got some scar tissue around the nerves, it's not thought that any further structural surgery would be of any benefit, then this can offer a 60 to 70% chance of helping with their leg pain. The chance of helping their back pain is a little lower, but what we're seeing with the newer devices and the newer ways of uh, generating a current over the back of the spinal cord, we're seeing improvements in their back pain. There are a huge number of studies on spinal cord stimulation out there. This was a large retrospective uh, study, and I put this up really just to show you that long-term success with failed back surgery is about 60%. And with angina, they did nine patients and it was 100%. So this is not just for um, uh, lower limb pain. We've had a number of other uh, uh, studies published. We've had some reviews of the the literature, this study found a 40% return to, to work um, uh, in these patients and about a 70% uh, patient satisfaction result. This is probably the best study. This was done by an American neurosurgeon and his team by the name of North and they did a prospective randomised control trial. So this is a much better quality uh, study than a lot of the others. And they had a good follow-up. They had a three-year follow-up. They had two groups. They had those patients that had the spinal cord stimulation and they had those patients that had repeat surgery, either in the form of another decompression or in the form of a, a fusion. And what they found was that far more patients crossed over from the repeat fusion or laminectomy group to the spinal cord stimulation group than the, the other way. When they looked at the outcomes, the outcomes following the spinal cord stimulation was substantially better. They had 47% of patients getting a good outcome versus 12% of patients um, uh, that had repeat structural surgery. And, and that, that's obviously a concern that I have patients that have multiple uh, repeat um, spinal surgeries. I always think very hard before I offer someone a, a second or third operation. And there are some patients that do require a second or third operation. There's no doubt about that. But a lot of the patients uh, that get these, particularly when you're dealing with the work cover group, uh, are not going to get a benefit and you're going to spend a hell of a lot of money and resources uh, for no nothing really of any benefit. The same group looked at the cost effectiveness of spinal cord stimulation and they found that when you looked at this in the long term, spinal cord stimulation was more cost effective than re-operation as well. So there are, there's the efficacy argument and there's the cost effectiveness argument. So the prognostic factors with spinal cord stimulation, what determines whether a person's likely to get a better outcome? Well, certainly if they've got radicular pain versus back pain, that makes me feel a lot better about offering it to them because I think their chance of a good outcome is much higher. The time interval between when they had their pain start and when they have their implantation is also important. Once you start to get over five to eight years, the results really become uh, extremely depressing. Whereas if you've exhausted the other treatment options early, certainly in the first year or two, and you make an earlier decision that this is the direction that you want to go or you'd recommend for the patient, then going in there earlier is much, like, much more likely to offer them a better result. So I think fiddling around for uh, five, eight, ten years is not a good idea. Certainly the younger age patients seem to do better, but that hasn't been borne out by all studies. Patients with depression and post-traumatic stress disorder certainly do worse, and that comes back to the... Uh, the, the previous talk and an interesting finding is that the number of previous surgeries doesn't make any difference so if they have had four laminectomies and a fusion they're not necessarily going to do any worse than if they've had a micro discectomy and they've just got ongoing neuropathic pain and, and a bit of scar tissue so I, th I thought that was quite interesting. The final uh, technique to discuss with you which is something that you'll probably see a lot more of over the next five years I think this is either really going to take off or the authorities are going to put the kibosh on it and cut it out altogether because it is very expensive, is peripheral nerve regional field stimulation. So this is where you put the electrodes uh, in the lower back in the region of their pain. Some people try to stimulate the cluneal nerves. If you believe that that's really the mechanism of action of this, which I don't, uh, then, then you try to do that. Uh, I just put them in the area of the pain. And it's a safe, it's a quick operation. It's really very, very low risk. It's extremely expensive though. Uh, but you can use this to treat ongoing back pain, you can use this to treat 
inguinal neuralgia after hernia repairs, for example. We've done a few patients like that. I found it can be quite useful for treating that midline neck pain that you often see after a whiplash injury or after patients have had an anterior cervical decompression infusion. And they might have had their arm pain uh, respond favorably, but they've still got a lot of neck pain. And, and I do see that sometimes. And I've got a couple of patients where we've done it on them and they've had a, a good result. Uh, and again, the studies here are pretty weak. There, there are a lot of small studies uh, out there in the literature. Uh, they're not in particularly high quality journals, but the ones that are certainly published uh, seem to report very uh, good outcomes. And my experience with a small group of patients has been that the majority will respond favorably to this technique. And again, that either they'll do really well with it or they won't do well at all. And if you can pick those patients during the trial, um, you can make it a much more cost-effective exercise for the, um, uh, for the health system in general, and you can also make it a much less arduous and less of a waste of time and, uh, and, uh, for, the, for the patients themselves as well. So there are a lot of studies out there. They're usually case reports, small groups of patients. Uh, the inguinal hernia patients, I think, are, are quite a good group to consider this on. Uh, having said that, uh, there's a lot of compelling evidence that spinal cord stimulation by placing a percutaneous type electrode uh, adjacent to the nerve roots in the lateral gutters at uh, T12 and L1, that will offer you a similar benefit for that post inguinal hernia pain. So if you have patients like that, um, uh, consider some spinal cord stimulation uh, as an option and, and in fact I would say that probably is a better first up option than, than doing this procedure. So. That really summarises things. I could talk about deep brain stimulation, but that's a whole new talk, and that's rarely utilised for pain. Uh, so I think I would save that for another day. Thank you very much.